Hello, you guys. I have five major mistakes that you are making right now in Dead Island 2 that are definitely holding you back and mistakes that are costing you a ton of time. I'm going to show you all of those right now to save you a bunch of time in this game. I also have a big time saver tip at the end. Number one is fuses and secret rooms. So there are a bunch of secret rooms in Dead Island 2 all across the map. These secret rooms in order to access them to get the legendary or rare gear as well as a bunch of other collectibles you're going to need fuses to access these rooms. Fuses can only actually be obtained through vendors. So there's a trick to doing this so that way you save a ton of time and don't ever really miss one of these rooms. As you can see, you enter one of these rooms, it has a ton of actual materials in them, as well as high collectible items and high level weapons compared to your actual overall level. Now, as you come across these in the game, you can basically enter these whenever you want. Again, you're gonna need fuses. So what I recommend is every time you stop by a home base area, you're gonna need to talk to a vendor and buy all of their fuses. Essentially, you can only have two or three max, but what you're gonna wanna do is stack up on fuses every single time you get the chance. So that way, in case you run into one of these areas, you're able to access it immediately. Number two is selling versus salvaging. So there's two different options in this game, selling your items for money, obviously, and then salvaging them for materials. Now you can see this weapon actually costs 6,250 in order to upgrade it and level match it from level 11, which it currently is, to level 12. Additionally, in order to upgrade these weapons and do all kinds of things, you're gonna need a bunch of money in this game, which is why I recommend not salvaging anything early or mid game. You get so many materials by just playing the game you need to sell your items early on so that way you can stack up as much money as possible and you can see here the majority of money comes from selling weapons because weapons obviously give you the most amount of money and the prices go up as you begin to level up and get better gear now there is one trick for trading that I'm going to show you and it's going to save you a bunch of time because the UI for trading doesn't line up with your actual equipped menu meaning once you go into the sell menu, it's just very confusing. So what you're gonna wanna do is go into a storage locker at any home base, then you can go to this unclaimed property tab, and these are items that have been lost at some point that you can also sell. You're gonna pick your main eight weapons that you're currently using. You're gonna drop all of those into your storage locker so that way they're completely safe in there. This takes away all of the trouble of actually having to sell items. Go to your unclaimed property tab, throw it all in your inventory, and then once you have all this extra gear in your inventory, it's all here by itself. All your gear that you currently are using is in the storage locker. So there's no way you can sell it on accident. And then you're going to go in here and just sell every single thing that you have. This is by far the least confusing way of selling items in this game. Then you can just go back to the storage locker and put all of this back in your inventory. That way you don't accidentally sell an item. Additionally, there's another good way to make money for your gray normal common materials. If you have over 30 or 40 of them, you need to go ahead and sell the rest because you can actually make a good amount of money doing this and you never really need more than 30 or 40 at any given time. However, the green materials and rare materials, I wouldn't worry about selling since they are more rare and harder to come across. But while you're questing, if you run out of inventory space, it's a complete waste if you don't salvage. So in that case, salvage your gear, make room, so you can come back with a full inventory and sell as much as possible. Number three is going to be locks and safes. So you're going to come across in Dead Island 2 a bunch of different toolboxes that are locked, needing specific keys, as well as safes that need specific keys as well. Also throughout playing the map, you're going to find random keys scattered across that has specific names on them. One of the things you're not going to want to do is waste time hunting down all these different lock boxes. And what I mean by that is if you see we go into our inventory here and we go to our keys that we have, you see that we're going to have a set of keys here. We're going to have safe deposit box number 49, number 33, a bunch of other different keys here, most of which unlock specific safes in the world. And if you find one of these keys in the world, you don't want to immediately search for the safe because it's going to be very, very hard to find. In order to save you a lot of time, and I mean literally hours, you should just collect every key you come across. Don't worry about finding the safes just yet. And then as you continue to explore the world, you will see these safe markers pop up as you discover safes. Once you've gone through a couple of these areas, you can then go back and then look at these individual lock boxes to see which ones correspond to which key you actually have which is marked here under the name of the key. And it then says where the key actually belongs to. For instance, this safe deposit key number nine is for a safe deposit box in Halpern Hotel. So then you can just go to your map, go to the district, 
go to Hopper Hotel. And then once you go there, you can just look on the map and see where your safes are that you've discovered and see if you can find the one that matches it. This is the easiest way to do this and will save you a ton of time once again. So mistake number four is just using any weapon literally whenever. There are a lot of different weapons in this game and a lot that correspond to certain enemies and being able to deal a lot more damage to specific enemies. Enemies in this game have weaknesses to different element types as well as damage types and I'll show you what I mean right now. So you can see this Claymore Sword, if I go into details, it is a sharp base damage profile there at the top. Now if I go over to, let's say, the club, you can see it is a blunt base damage profile. And if I go over to these as well, this is going to be a sharp, and this is going to be a sharp, and this is going to be a sharp. So given that there are different base damage profiles, these are best used against certain types of enemies, and you can actually see that if you go into collectibles and Zompedia. So if you're ever having trouble with a fight, especially some of the bigger Apex variant zombies, you can see here as you actually discover them as well as common enemies, and as you defeat more and more of them, you actually unlock these tips to beating them much easier and showing their weaknesses. For instance, you can see the third here, runners are weak to sharp and bleed damage, meaning if you use a sharp weapon, you're going to be doing a lot more damage against these guys. And again, for Apex variants, you can see as you defeat a certain amount of these enemies, you unlock tips as well to help defeat them. For instance, under the skin here, the second tip, a crusher resists explosive and is weak to bleed damage, meaning you're going to want to use bleed damage when you can on a weapon against these guys and not use explosive damage because obviously they're resistant to it. It isn't going to do near as much damage to them. This gives you a full guide on how to defeat every single enemy you have and structure the weapons that you're using, meaning you can carry a bunch of different weapon types and pull out which one you need to defeat one of these guys as they come up. This is great for bosses and will save you a ton of time in defeating especially bigger enemies with a lot more health that do a lot more damage. Mistake number five is XP farming. Now, I already know a ton of people are going to go ahead and do this in this game to try and get as high a level as possible, and I'm here to tell you don't do it it's completely not needed throughout your initial playthrough of the game you're going to be able to tell as you go through different areas you level up by normally doing side quests main missions killing zombies etc now the reason there's really no need to xp farm or anything like this is because first of all it's not a race sit back enjoy the game do all the side quests do all the main missions etc but on top of that, now even if you do level up doing some insane sort of XP farming method, a lot of these enemies all scale to the areas based on your actual level. So you're never going to be level 60 fighting level 9 zombies. That's just not how the game works. The enemies scale towards you and your current level. No need to XP farm. Sit back, enjoy the game, and do everything. And the bonus tip and mistake that a bunch of people are going to make just by not paying attention is blueprints. So obviously blueprints is a main portion of the game because it gives you actual mods that you can put on your weapons to make them insane, OP, and way better than they have been just by themselves. So you can see every single mod that you put on a weapon obviously makes it incredibly better. And there are a bunch of ways to get blueprints, one being by workshops. If you go by a workshop, make sure to always check next to the workshop. Every time you go back to one, generally they spawn a new blueprint right next to them and you can get a lot of blueprints for free this way. Additionally, blueprints are picked up via merchants or vendors. So every time you go to a merchant, make sure you check and see if they have a blueprint. If they do and it's something you may need to use in the future, go ahead and buy it so that way you don't mess out on it later. These are the five biggest mistakes I have made in my first playthrough of Dead Island 2. If you're wondering which Dead Island character to choose, make sure you check out this video on the right or subscribe on the left. Thanks.